So as most companies got plunged into remote work, one of the questions that was still out there from IT teams was, well, how are we gonna support all these users when they're connecting in from their own devices, or maybe they're even on corporate devices, but they're not connecting to the corporate network. So they're asking, well, what is the solution that's cloud-based that's gonna be easy for us to connect to all of our end users to support them with their IT needs? Well, today we're gonna be looking at what's called remote help within Microsoft Intune, and that is Microsoft's solution right now, which is in preview to try and bridge that gap. So let's go ahead and take a look. So as mentioned earlier, remote help gives you the ability to support your users, whether they are on their own personal devices, a corporate device, and in different scenarios, whether they're fully remote, whether they're a frontline worker, a knowledge worker, even within the actual corporate office itself. However, there's a few things that I think are really important here. Firstly, this is fully integrated into the Microsoft platform, so for Intune and Microsoft Endpoint Manager. Second, from an identity and security point of view, we're using Azure Active Directory. We're then using all the role-based access within Microsoft Intune, and the solution allows you to use elevation on an endpoint. So the good thing about remote help is because it's integrated into Microsoft, there's only a couple of things you need to get going. Firstly, you need an Intune subscription, which you may have guessed by now. Secondly, this only works with Windows 10 or 11. The third thing you need to know is that this is actually gonna need a remote help app installed on the user's computers. They can either go ahead and just download this and install it themselves if they have the ability to, or you can deploy it through Microsoft Intune using Win32 apps. I have a video all around how to use Win32 apps and to create applications there. Also, the uh, Microsoft team here have done a great job of documenting how to deploy this application. So I'll put the link down in the description as well. And then as you could probably imagine, there are a few things that you just need to be aware of when it comes to network and a few considerations. To get this going then is really nice and simple. Firstly, we just need to go enable remote help within Intune. Then we can go ahead and set up all of our RBAC. So who can help people, what can they see, you know, who's got few, full control, elevation, all that kind of jazz. We can then go ahead and configure access to remote help. Then we're gonna go look at how can you download the remote help application. And again, I'll show the Win32 documentation. And then at the end of this, we're gonna look at then starting a remote session within remote help. So let's go ahead and dive into Microsoft Intune and start looking at enabling remote help. So first up then we need to enable remote help from the Microsoft Endpoint Manager Admin Center. And for us to do this, it's nice and simple. We just need to go to tenant administration, then our connectors and tokens, and then you're gonna see remote help there, which is currently in preview. From here, we're gonna jump over to the settings tab, and we only have a couple of options. First of all, it's enable remote help, which because we're gonna demonstrate this, we're gonna put that to enable. And then our second option here is allow remote help to unenroll devices. So if we think about earlier when we had the BYOD situation, people are using their own devices at home, well, they're probably not gonna be enrolled in Intune, or they may not be enrolled in Intune, depends on your company's policies. So if you wanna be able to support them as well, then you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and enable this. Our next task is to set up role-based access control. The good news for this is that it's all using Intune RBAC. So if you're familiar with that, this is gonna be a walk in the park. However, if you're not, I will put a link down below so you can see my video all around Intune RBAC, and that will point you in the right direction. So. By default here, if you're using some of the built-in roles within Intune, you can utilize the help desk operator role. And this is gonna have all the permissions you need for remote help app. And this allows you then to have you know, view screen, elevation, take full control. And that's gonna be the remote help app permissions. And then we're also gonna have the remote task of offer remote assistance. So if you're using the built-in role, help desk operator will get you going. Of course, it is worth mentioning, you can use your own custom role for this. So you might wanna break this up into different ways. Maybe you have you know, a role just for people that can view screens and help people that way around. And then for maybe your next level of support, you're gonna give them the ability to do elevation and full control. So you can create these roles as you see fit, but again, the built-in role help desk operator does have everything you need. 
So now that we've gone ahead and got our role set up, we now need to start assigning users to this so they can start using remote help. So for this, we're just gonna to go to tenant administration roles and you can select either the inbuilt role or you can choose a custom one. For this example, I'm just gonna choose a custom one for my remote help full access. And then from here, we're gonna to go to assignments and assign. I'm gonna give it a name. I'm just gonna do this for my help desk level one. And then we're gonna move forward. And here we can start adding our members that are gonna have access to this role. So in my case, I'm gonna add my help desk level one users. So everyone within this security group is gonna be one of my help desk employees. Next step, we need to start setting up our scope groups. So for this, we can go ahead and add, you, know, you could add just a subset of users and devices, but for this demonstration, I'm gonna add in all devices and all users. It is worth noting here that the documentation does call out if a sharer's device isn't in the scope of a helper, that helper cannot provide assistance. So just bear that in mind as you're setting up these assignments. At this point, you can go through, set up any scope tags you have, and then we'll just get this role created. So at this point now, we're in a position where we have our role, we have users assigned to it, and we have remote help enabled from our tenant. So before we dive into the actual end user experience, what you do need to make sure is that you have installed the remote help application on the sharer's device and the viewer's device. So everyone needs to have the remote help application installed. As you imagine, there's a couple of ways you could go about this. Firstly, if the individual user has permissions to install applications on their device, they can just go to aka.ms forward slash download remote help and then download install the application. And that's one way of doing it. Of course, that doesn't really scale that easily across your enterprise, but if they're using their own device, for example, that's probably gonna be the way they have to do it. However, if you have most of your devices enrolled and you wanna scale this a little bit easier than everyone installing it themselves, you can go ahead and make sure that you use this as a Win32 application. So you can easily deploy this from Microsoft Intune. We're not gonna dive through that today. However, the documentation does cover this really easily on how to get started. And I will put a link down in the description on how to actually use Win32 apps within Microsoft Intune, just as an overarching introduction to Win32 applications. So again, either people are gonna download this themselves or you're gonna deploy this from Microsoft Intune to your enrolled devices. Okay, so at this point, we're ready to have a look at remote help. There's a few things that we're just gonna get from a terminology point of view. When we say helper, that's gonna be our, for example, support engineer, or a person that's gonna be supporting the person that needs assistance. And then the other Microsoft term used here is the sharer. And the sharer is gonna be the person, as we just said, who needs assistance. So in this example, we're gonna be looking at this from an unenrolled device, and we'll have a look later on at how you could do this for enrolled devices as well. So first things first is both the helper and the sharer need to start the remote help app on their device and sign in and authenticate into their organization. After signing into the application, the first thing we can then do is request a security code. So as the helper, we can say, let's get a security code. And at this point, we would then share that security code with the person that needs assistance. What they need to do then is just on their device is under the get help section is they need to put that security code in and then hit submit. At this point then, the helper is gonna have a couple of things that they can see. Firstly, they can see all the information that they need about the person that needs assistance. So their profile picture, their name, their job role, so on and so forth. And then they have a couple of options. Do they wanna take full control or do they just wanna view the screen? And this is important because if you take over in full control, right now when you end the session, it is gonna log that user off. So if you're doing full control, full warning disclosure, make sure that you tell the person that you're assisting that they are gonna to need to log off at the end of this or it's automatically gonna log them off at the end of this. So save any work, all that kind of jazz. So at this point, we can go ahead, for example, and do take full control. And then on the sharer side, they're now gonna see all the information about the, the helper. So in my case, they're gonna see that as a help desk user, they're gonna see their job role, their email address, and they're gonna have the decision whether or not they wanna allow 
or decline the support. In our case, of course, because we want to show this, we're just going to go ahead and hit allow. Now that we've established the connection, you'll see first up that we have a little notification here saying that this device is not compliant with some of your organization's security policies. So you can make the decision whether you want to just leave the session now or continue to go through. In our case, we're going to continue to look at this device. And now from our established session, we can see a few interesting things. Firstly, on the top left, it says the user is not in administrator mode. And that's important because in a moment, I'm going to show us elevating the Windows terminal. So from this device, because we have full access and ability to elevate, if we know the local administrator password or we are a local administrator to this, it is going to allow us to elevate. You'll also see across kind of the top bar, there are a few different things that you can do here from annotating, viewing the full screen or different monitors, and then leaving the session. And then again, as we go across kind of these options here in our remote help app, I do want to share when we go ahead and click end, you are going to see the user experience where one, it says, look, the screen sharing has ended. We can close or try and start over. But once we've closed this, because we did that full control, it is now going to log off that user. So you really do need to bear that in mind. So we're looking at the workflow from the other side now. As a helper, you've just received a call or a text or a Teams message, and somebody needs assistance. And you're working day in, day out in the Microsoft Endpoint Manager Admin Center. So you want to just quickly get to a device and open up remote help. So this is really nice and easy. All you need to do is just go to your devices, all devices, and just select the device that somebody needs assistance on. And then you can just go ahead and do the new remote assistance session. At this point, it's then just going to go ahead and load up the remote help app, and then you get back through the normal workflow. So at this point, you're going to request a security code. You're going to share that with the person that needs help. And then from there, you're going to go through all the authentication, so on and so forth, and you're going to be in that remote session. So for monitoring, we're back here in the Endpoint Admin Center, and all we need to do is just go down to the Tenant Administration, and then we're going to go back to our connectors and tokens and then back to remote help where we saw earlier how to do the settings. Of course, it tells you again, look, this is currently in preview. When it's GA, it is going to have an additional cost. But for now, all we want to look at is the monitoring. So firstly, from the monitor section, we can see that how many current active sessions they are, what's the session time, how many total sessions. So that's you know interesting high level information. The other thing that we can do is just go to the remote help session section here, and then we can see what sessions have even happened. So we can see that the help desk user um, was assisting Megan here. And there's a few more things. If we could see the device name, we would see it here. And then also, you know, when did the session start and end? So really nice and simple, just quick ways of looking at this. Of course, you can export this information, slice and dice it how you want as well. Well, that's it for this video. I'll put a couple of other videos on the screen that you might enjoy, and we'll see you next time.